So this weekend there is a retreat going on in Newbridge for young people, uh, run by a group called Youth 2000, it's where uh, our young people are uh, at the moment. And it is quite impressive in this day and age to see 400 young people, so between the ages of about 16 and 28-ish, uh, gathered for a weekend of, of prayer. So there's confession and adoration and mass, a lot of fun, um, spaghetti bolognese, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of people from all around the country meeting up who haven't seen each other in a long time. Uh, and it's, 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 a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to be part of. And one thing that you see, like, as, long as, as often as I've been going to these retreats, uh, one thing that, that's really key to them is the primary reason these young people come, the primary reason isn't just the faith or isn't the faith on its own. The main reason they come is because of community, friendship. You know, it's the friendship that brings them back together. It's a, a very, very important part of our faith, you know, community, communion, that people can come together and realize they're not alone, realize they're not the, maybe the only one in their family or in their parish. And this is the way the situation has gone now. Often these young people are the only pers- people in their families practicing, so, so the parents aren't practicing. Now the young person maybe met someone who goes to these retreats or had a faith experience and now wants to come along and experience something themselves but without the support of their parents. It's, it's, a very, it's an unusual situation for Ireland, but this is, this is the way we're gone. So you meet these young people who are quite courageous, very, very courageous. Like, exempl- like Don't get me wrong, they're not perfect. They have their battles. Uh, their faith might be in, a kind of a, in, in its infancy almost, but they've got backbone. They've got backbone. Like They're willing to say, yeah, I, I've started kind of going to Mass. You know, drives my mom mad. And you find yourself, you know, did, sorry, did I hear you correct? It drives you, your mom mad that you do go to Mass. Yeah, yeah, she can't stand it. You know, and you have to have, we have to kind of catch up with where society has, has gone so quickly in the last 10 or 15 years, you know. So in our, the beginning of our reading today, there's, there are just really beautiful lines from the prophet Isaiah, right? Console my people, console them, says your Lord. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem, so that's the, the, the church, us. Speak to the heart of the church, speak to the heart of Jerusalem, and call her that her time of service is ended, her sin is atoned for. I think there's something that we really need to to get back to in our faith in order to understand it correctly, in order to understand the heart of what goes on in our faith as, as, as Catholics, is that God wants to console us. God wants to redeem us, to give us life. God wants to give us eternity. God wants to bring us into his family, into this community, communion, forever. He wants to bring us home, that we can be with the Father forever. Like these, these are beautiful images like of, of, of family and of community and communion and healing and consolation. And we don't talk about that enough or we don't hear about that enough. Like how does consolation work? I mean, have you ever, I mean, from the time you were a child, and you're outside running around with your, your big dozy brother who's a bit awkward and he blasts the ball and it hits you straight in the face, you know, and you get that, you know, that, that kind of taste and smell when you, get, when you get hit in the nose. It's got a particular kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, sensation. Not the nicest, you know what I mean? It's, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's an awful feeling to get a football in the face, you know? And you just check in, is my nose broken? And, you know, your eyes start watering and you're, you're at a slightly higher state of consciousness than you were 10 seconds before. Uh, and when you're a little kid then, you know, someone in your family, big brother, big sister, mom, dad, someone might run over and say, are you okay? And you're in that kind of state of shock where they have to distract you before you start crying. Remember that? You know, when you see someone get, get kicked, in the, <laughs> get a ball in the face and you go, yay! <laughs> and then they go, <laughs> distract them before they start crying. And then we get a, you know, a little bit older, it's a little bit harder, you know, teenagers to kind of console teenagers, a wee bit harder. As adults, harder again. But then, how, how are things in a, in a good family at a time of bereavement? You know, someone passes away, a parent or, God forbid, a, a brother or a sister or a child, you know, and the whole family comes together. And the thing about consolation is, consolation, it doesn't take away the fact. If a person has died, right, the family gathering together, and talking about the person, or crying with each other, and you know, preparing the meals and preparing the sandwiches, you know, just to, so that mom or dad don't have to do it. 
people taking care of each other like that, it doesn't bring the person back. It doesn't undo the problem. But there's something about having people around you who love you that makes it feel just that bit easier to carry. You know, that consolation. Consolation of having people there who understand and who care. And they see when you're having a hard time and they, in modern day communication, they'll send you a message or in a family situation, they might ask you, you okay? You know, if you ever want to talk, I'm right here. Or let's go for a little walk. Consolation. The consolation of knowing somebody cares. And as I say, the interesting thing is it doesn't take away the problem, but it can help you get through it. So think of our faith in terms of consolation. God, who is our Father, who wishes to console us in our bereavement, in our sin. He wishes to console us, to bring us out of that. He, can't, he, he doesn't undo the problem per se. As in he, if someone is passing, has passed away, or if there's someone in our family suffering from, from an addiction, uh, that may or may not be healed. It depends. It depends. It depends on the other person's collaboration too. So we don't, don't blame it all on God. But to know that God is on my side, that he's rooting for me, that he's supporting me, that he carries me. We need to get back to that. We need to understand the heart of God. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit has this title, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Paraclete. And paraclete means the consoler. So we have a God who wishes to console us. The Holy Spirit who wishes to console you. So in those moments of of, of darkness or loneliness or isolation, those moments of sadness, we have a God who's right there with us. Right there in, in, in the thick of our misery. He's right there. And he knows the way out. And, and the way out, will, it will come. It may take a bit of time. Yes, it does. It, grief and healing, they, they, they take time. They're, they're, it's not a click of the fingers kind of situation. The Lord, but the Lord walks through it with us. And then we come out the far side, still having the memory of the person we loved or the situation. You know, we still have the, those, those good, wholesome memories. We miss them, but, but we've gotten through it. Our hope is also that we'll, we'll meet them again in heaven. Just yesterday at the retreat, I was talking to a girl who uh, had a, a very sad relationship with her own mom. Her mom was quite violent. Uh, she thought she was doing the right thing, but uh, she would physically beat her children for the smallest infringement of the many, many rules that there were in that house. So much so that now, as a young woman, if, if, if anything falls, like, like a, a, a teaspoon falls off the table, she braces herself for the impact. She braces herself, you know, she, something falls, and she freezes. Because she, she, when she was a kid, if anything, you know, if she dropped anything, there'd be an immediate, physic, violent physical reaction from her mom, you know, and she was just telling me how, how her faith now, little by little, is healing her. You know, that when, when this happened, like she was, she was baking, uh, I say she's, a, she's a young woman, she was baking at home, and <clears throat> she was putting the, the mix from the bowl into the little cup, cases, or the, okay, bun cases, right, into the bun cases, cupcake cases, bun cases. Right? And as she was doing it, a little bit of the, the mix dropped onto the table and just splattered. And again, she, bra- she braced herself, right? She braced herself and said, Lord, you don't want me to live in fear. You don't want me to live in fear. So she dug the spoon in and just <laughs> deliberately like, dropped a whole spoon of the mix on the floor and burst out laughing and then burst into tears. And burst out laughing. It was, it was a, it was, she said it was the strangest kind of healing moment. This moment of encounter with, with, with God in the kitchen while baking. That was healing a memory from her, from her childhood. Console my people. Console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call her. That her time of service has ended and her sin is atoned for. The Lord wishes to heal us. Just even two weekends ago, there was a, a retreat here from, from Limerick, and there were some, some lads who are from very, very difficult backgrounds. I was talking to one of the, the priests who works with them over the weekend as well, 
And he said, uh, two of them have a parent in prison for murder. One of them, his mother, is imprisoned for murder. Like, you, you live in an environment like that. What does it matter if you do your homework or not? What does it matter if the pizza boy comes to deliver food to your door and you take the pizza and say, you can leave now and don't pay him? What does, it, what does anything matter? What does anything matter at all? Why would you care? what the state says, what the law says, what the police say. Why would you care about anything? Why would you care about anyone? You know, it, 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 it tears their heart out. It leaves a massive, massive void. So if you want to get back in there, if you want to, to help heal them, it's a slow, slow process because they're not used to trusting that anybody can be depended on. Even my mom could walk out. Even my dad could walk out. How do I know you won't? You could just be one of the many. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a rough ride. It's a, it's a slow process to, to, to earn their, their, their respect, to earn their love. It's a difficult thing to bring them back to the Lord because they think, where was he? Where was he when all this happened? So to draw them back to this relationship with the Lord where they can see him as a consoler is an amazing gift. It's a slow process, but it's, it's, so, it's such a, a wonderful thing to be able to do. And in a way, we're all part of that. You and I testify to the fact that God has been my consolation. God has been my consolation. I know he can be yours. We witness to that. You and I witness to that in the way we live out there. We have to look consoled. We have to look like we have been helped so that others who are in such dire need of consolation know where to go, that they know where the source is. So this is, our, this is our faith. It's such a gift. It's so healing and it's so real. It has everything to do with real life and real situations and real grief and real joy and christenings and funerals. It, our faith has everything to do with your real life experiences. So Lord, we want to experience you as our consoler. We want to experience this divine consolation. <coughs> so we invite you into those parts of our lives that we are hiding, those parts of our lives that we're ashamed of. And Lord, may you heal us and console us from within. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. The Lord is our consolation. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us uh, for these homilies on the internet, wherever you are watching us. Uh, it's a great honour and privilege that you would join us uh, on such a regular basis to share in our life here in Holy Family Mission. We're now eight years on the go, and we've had the privilege of welcoming over 90 young people to take part in our year-long faith formation programme. Uh, and all of that is possible due to your donations, your support, your help and your prayers. So we're greatly, greatly appreciative of all that has been done here, uh, also through your support and your efforts. Uh, this is our fundraising Christmas appeal time of the year as well. So if any of you can or would like to support us, uh, we would be delighted if you could do so. We, maybe I shouldn't be saying all of this, but we uh, uh, charge our young people €4,000 a year to be here. It costs in our around €10,000. We subsidise the price then by running retreats here and by fundraising. That's how, that's how we, we work. So uh, thank you so much for all <coughs> that you can do to further the mission of Holy Family Mission, that we can continue to renew, reinvigorate and revive the faith here in this country and indeed abroad. God bless you.